Hello there and welcome back once again to Jamie's Running. I'm here with another shoe review. So this time it's a box that has arrived from Pro Direct Running. And I'm not entirely sure exactly what is in this box. So let's open it up and have a look. So, what we have then is some kit from Mizuno. Looks like we've got some t-shirts, got some shorts, and we have a whole host of new socks. But what we also have is a Mizuno box. And what is in this Mizuno box is a pair of Mizuno Wave Rider 24. Now full disclosure before we get into this, I've been sent this shoe and this kit from Pro Direct Running as well as Mizuno and they've asked me to take these for a run and to feed back my thoughts and to put together a little bit of a video from my first run. I'm under no obligations when it comes down to what I say so I want to give a good honest review. The first thing that I noticed getting them out of the box is the shoe is quite a heavy shoe. Now I've never run in Mizuno before so I have absolutely no preconceptions or no assumptions around how I'm going to feel about this shoe shoe. So I'm coming at it with a totally fresh pair of eyes, totally open-minded as well and as always what I'm not going to do is to get into all of the technical specifications. So the shoes have been out for a little while now and I'm sure there are many many other YouTube reviews out there which get into all of the nitty-gritty of the technical specs. What materials are used in the construction, the weight, the difference in heel drop, the upper material, the midsole material, stack height, all of that sort of stuff. What I'm really interested in as always is the look of the shoe, how they feel and how I feel like they've performed during that first run. Because to me that's what's most important. It's all about how you connect with that shoe when you put it on, how it connects with the ground, how it makes you feel during the run, the comfort, the performance and that sort of stuff. So very first impressions then and getting them out of the box and just holding them in my hand. They feel thick if that makes sense. The material feels quite thick, they feel quite sturdy, the outsole feels quite sturdy, the midsole feels quite sturdy. Generally it just feels like quite a sturdy shoe. It's not all that light but it's not necessarily supposed to be. It's not like it's a racing shoe. I think this is pitched at the everyday running type of shoe. So the colour scheme first up, it's a blue upper with a sort of a pink streak through the midsole there. White midsole, you've got this plastic what they call a wave plate which covers the rear end of the midsole there which is just sticking out the side that sort of a ready pink color and then you've got a black outsole silver mizuno branding on the side which sort of stands out and you've got the wave rider 24 badge on the back there as well so nothing massively overly special in terms of how they look although i do think this exposed plate in the rear is fairly cool the upper material itself feels really thick. There's not a great deal of give in there, but just putting my hands in, it feels quite spacious. The tongue feels quite cushioned, as does the round the back of the heel there as well. So I'm hoping that that means for a nice secure fit around the heel. There's a lot of heel cushion around where the Achilles will sit. The lacing, it's a traditional lacing system. You've got eyelets all the way up the side there and you've got a double eyelet there up at the top which will allow me to apply the runner's knot as I do with all of my running shoes. If you're not familiar with the runner's knot, check out one of my recent YouTube videos which shows you how to apply the runner's knot and the benefits of doing so in terms of getting a really nice locked in feel to your running shoes. And just giving the shoe a squeeze around about the heel there, it feels as though there's a, maybe a plastic plate of some kind which is offering some support around the heel. This part of the shoe here is quite solid and rigid. There's not a lot of give in there. Now when it comes to the midsole, we've got something which is called the Mizuno Energy Foam. So that's energy but with a Z instead of a G at the end. And what that is, is it's lighter than some of the traditional Mizuno foam that had been used. However, one thing that I am going to say is that Energy Foam is only present in the rear half of the shoe. So yes, what it's doing compared to the earlier versions of the Wave Rider is saving some weight compared to some of the traditional midsole foam that they've used, but we are only seeing it in this rear half of the shoe. 
So I'm going to bring it in a little closer so that you can see this wave plate, which again, it doesn't run the full length of the shoe, only the rear side. And what this is for is it's for shock absorption and dispersion. My only thinking around that, however, is that they've placed the plate towards the rear of the shoe. So is it therefore assuming that it's going to be absorbing shock for heel strikers? My tendency when I run is to land around about this area, the mid to the forefoot. And therefore, am I or am I not going to get a benefit from this wave plate? That remains to be seen during the run. When it comes to the outsole, there's quite a vast amount of outsole rubber there, which is great given that we are now heading into the colder, wetter, more slippy months. I'm hoping that this rubber on the outsole is going to provide a nice amount of stability and security and grip during the winter. There is some exposed midsole foam there along the bottom, including this energy foam towards the back. However, there is quite a vast coverage of outsole rubber there. You've got a little bit of exposed wave plate there as well, which is quite a nice little touch. Now, another thing that I am going to say, and this again is just based on look and feel and not necessarily actual statistics, but if you take a look at the side profile there, it does look as though there is quite a large stack height, particularly in the heel versus the front. And so I am wondering about that drop and how that's going to feel during the run. High at the back, slightly lower at the front. Again, we'll see once we try the shoe on. So I don't think there's a whole lot more that I can say just on look and feel. So let's slip them on and see how they feel. The shoe is slipped on without any problem whatsoever. Very easy to just pull it open in order to get your foot in there. Now there's plenty of space in the toe box there. There's arguably more space than I'm used to in some of my running shoes. There's a, perhaps a little bit more than a thumbnails width at the front. So I would say larger fitting than something like a Nike shoe. Now I just want to bring it in from above for a second because there's one thing that I will say around the front of the toe box here the upper is reinforced you can pretty much feel there's a, a ridge around the outside here which is harder than the upper material here and what I'm finding is my big toe is just touching up against the upper here and pressing against that as I lean forward so one thing I'm perhaps slightly worried about is yes, I've got loads of length there on the upper. My toenail sort of ends here, but I haven't got a great deal of width in the toe box there. So that big toe there is perhaps concerning me just a little bit as to whether or not that is going to rub against the outer and cause me a little bit of an issue. But we'll see when I'm running how that feels. Around the middle of the foot here, there's actually quite a lot of space. In the arch where the shoe does come in a little bit, but there's plenty of space in the upper to compensate for that slightly thinner midsole. So then, one of the first things that I'll say is that there's not really a great deal to say about how the shoes feel. I think for that, I'm going to need to take them out on a run, but just standing here, there's nothing that's really jumping out as a feature of how they feel, if that makes sense. The one thing that I do feel is that there's quite a high stack height in the rear, as I said a little earlier, where the back of the shoe seems to be fairly high in comparison to the front of the shoe and that drop, I can sort of feel that. It's not like I'm standing on my tiptoes or anything like that, but there does appear to be a little bit of a noticeable difference compared to some of my other everyday shoes, for example. And actually where I'm feeling that, if you imagine that this is my foot, is just a little off center towards the inside of my foot on the heel. There's a little bit of a, a pressure point there almost where I can just feel just something pushing on my heel. So I'll be interested to see how that translates to a feeling during the run just giving the heel a little bit of a squeeze and you can sort of feel that extra bit of cushioning and I suppose that wave plate as well, flexing 
as you press down on the heel. So that's where it does this shock absorption and dispersion. But once again, I'm not a heel striker and so how useful that is to me during the run will remain to be seen. So I don't think there's a great deal more to be said by just standing here jumping up and down in my house. I think what I need to do is lay the shoes out with the rest of my running kit and take them for a spin and see how they perform during an actual run. And so I will see you tomorrow. Here we are then, let's go. Right, so I'm four kilometers in now. And in terms of first impressions then, it doesn't feel like an overly cushioned shoe. Now, maybe that's because it needs to be broken in, but it is a fairly firm foot strike each time. That wave plate towards the rear of the shoe, because of where I land, which tends to be mid to four foot, I'm not really getting the benefit of that as it stands. Having said that, it is a comfortable shoe. So I've got a nice locked in feeling around my foot. My foot feels firmly held in place. In terms of stability, it seems absolutely spot on. I'm not afraid that taking corners and that kind of thing, that I'm gonna roll an ankle or anything. Very stable underfoot, which is great. It's wet out here today, and I've had absolutely no issues with slipping and sliding. So that nice thick rubber outsole is providing me with enough grip to feel confident in each footstep. So the majority of my runs are predominantly on road and that's what these shoes are made for and given that we're heading into slippy season the confidence in that outsole and that grip is something that's really important to me so that's a thumbs up so here we are at Wheat Slate Colliery you can see the hill there in the distance I think what we might do is head up the top and check out the views we're heading uphill now it's a fairly steep incline and it's wet but there's no issues with the grip here on the uphill so that's good so here we are at the top of Wheatslade Colliery great vantage points of Newcastle from up here got the city centre over in that direction and you can look out over the countryside in that direction where you can see those two rainbows in the distance but it's great we're heading towards sunset too the sunsets over here. See the sky is a beautiful orange. There's a guy singing there. The top of his voice on the top of a hill. You don't see that every day. When it comes to the weight of the shoe, they're not all that light. I would probably put them in a similar bracket to the Pegasus 37 Shield, as opposed to perhaps the mid-tier, uh, or what I like to call the tempo tier shoes. So those shoes that you use for faster training runs interval sessions the lighter training shoes if you like so i'm sitting quite nicely at a pace of four minutes and 45 a kilometer and the shoes feel comfortable at this pace the weight is really suited for those comfortable runs i wouldn't necessarily use them for a race but for those comfortable and those easy runs i'm really just bagging those miles i think they're going to be pretty good so i'm coming up to nine kilometers now not sure what distance I'm going to do yet, but I'm going to sit back, stick my audiobook on for a bit, really feel the shoe, concentrate on what they like to run in so that I can report back a little bit later in the run and pick it up then. There's a couple of deer there, just gone through that fence. Well, I wasn't really expecting hailstones. But here we are, probably don't need glasses on. All right, here we are then, coming in for the finish. And that is that. 
Right, so here we are then, done and dusted. Um, my GoPro battery died and so I was unable to capture some footage towards the end there. But in summary, the shoes actually started to ease up. They started to feel quite comfortable. Um, at the steady pace, I think I picked up a bit pace towards the end, um, probably negative splits once I have a look at Strava, but I was sort of running in the 430s for the second half of that run. And once I was settled into a pace that I was comfortable with, the shoes just continued to feel comfortable. We had some ups and downs, some twists and turns, that that sort of thing. They maintain that stability, maintain plenty of grip even when hailstones started, when it started to get really wet. As you can see, it's soaking out here now. So I can see them being a fairly good shoe for bagging lots of nice, easy, comfortable miles. And that's what I'll be using them for throughout the winter. The grip was great, all of that sort of stuff. Um, comfortable, not a race shoe because of that extra bit of weight. Um, I probably wouldn't use them for intervals or speed work or anything like that but comfortable long distance runs I'm quite happy with and that is half marathon number 59 of the year so far one more to go to finish my 60 half marathons in the year challenge so thank you for watching like comment subscribe all of that sort of good stuff share this video with your friends and I look forward to seeing you on the next one have a good one Yo!